Hey guys, how are y'all today? I am Krista Mulkey and I'm a furniture artist, owner of Texas Gypsy Style. And today we are glazing. I've got some paint couture here and I've got this in the description. You'll can, uh, go on my website and check out the paint couture products on there. This is Van Dyke Brown, and I was kind of excited because I haven't glazed anything in such a long time, so I'm kind of just um, showing everybody what's going on with it. Uh, I've already painted this dresser, and I painted it in General Finishes Milk Paint. And did some fun little designs and details on it right here, all the, all the way around. If y'all want to see more on um, this dresser, I did a live video on my YouTube yesterday. You guys can go on there at Texas Gypsy Style um, and check out more videos. So... If y'all are interested in learning to glaze, it can be um, a little daunting sometimes, but, oh, all oh, right, especially when you get it on you <laughs> right away. I can't not get paint on me. Okay, but let's just get right to it. We're creating an old world look on this dresser. So I am basically making it dirty, <laughs> making it look dirty. All right, a tip is I use baby wipes to wipe it back when I'm doing this look. Um, and all you do is wipe it back like so. Make sure y'all can see that. You don't wanna leave it on there too long because it will dry. And it's it's still, it'll still come off, but not as easy as if you work in smaller sections. So I definitely recommend working in small sections for any glaze that you use, not just this one. So this is Van Dyke Brown <clears throat> glaze, and that's um, Paint Couture's glaze. So I'm just trying to get like a more of a clean area here in the middle. How's everyone doing this? Well, good morning. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> good morning, Cynthia. <laughs> and Abby, Miss Abby. All right, I'm gonna move on to the bottom here. So I really want that to kind of dry. I'm changing the color of the um, paint. It's going to be a little bit darker. Um, and that's what I want though. So we're not gonna have that bright, bright, bright green all over we're gonna start creating like shadows and dirt after I get this color changed up <laughs> hi Cindy how are you We 
are up and at them this morning. Sometimes it takes a few, depending on how much glaze you put on there, it might take a few white backs. You don't have to use a baby wipe, but I think I like them the most. I'm able to move that glaze around pretty easily after I, when I have one of these. And it takes practice. Um, I always said that I hated glaze when I first started. Oh, well, good luck at school, Teller. I know. <laughs> oh, y'all have a good drive up there. I'm going to be driving up the, to Richmond area in a little while to pick up my, my two kids, my older kids. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, oh, I wanted to do that too. All right. So I kind of am leaving, um, these darker spots in here. So let's bring it down here. You can see it better then, right? Yeah. Okay, so I gotta move my leg here. So, do you guys like to blend? Have you tried blending? A lot of people are nervous about blend or blending, uh, glazing. I got blending on my head. Um, have any of you tried glazing before? A lot of people that I know have come across are just like, I don't want to try it, oh, you know. But, um, I would say just try it, like, on, you know, something small, you know, especially if you're, um, new to paint and furniture, new to a new product. And, um, you'll be able to see how it changes um, the color of the paint that you have. You know, that way you're not surprised and you haven't gone completely over the project that you're working on. And so I kind of, I do it a little differently than I would than some people do. Um, some people do give it an all over look, you know, like we did, and just have, um, have that darkness all over. <laughs> what kind of baby wipes? Uh, these are uh, Berkeley and Jensen. I think they're just generic. Um, I wouldn't go with, they're unscented. <laughs> I wouldn't go with like one of those super moisturizing ones. I would say just go with the generic, you know, like you don't want them too wet. And I do have a uh, one trick for you guys. If you have not had a baby or had many baby wipes in your home. If you flip them upside down, all the moisture will sink down. <clears throat> so whenever you go to take your baby wipe, that top one will always be uh, moist. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> so that's my little trick to keeping them um, wet and not dried out. So. This is water-based, so it does dry pretty quick. Okay, now I'm going to get in here a little bit more. And we'll come in, we're gonna come in a little bit darker around the edges. <clears throat> I also, Kind of frame in with my glaze so I'm kind of like painting with it and I'm creating um, my lines here this is something that I always do and how I can get a pretty clean um, like a sharp look with it a finished kind of look because wherever I put this, it's um, if I leave it thick like that, it will stay. Um, it will stay. It's not gonna like dissipate. So if you do have a mark on there that you're not gonna be crazy about, you wanna make sure that you wipe that away. At the same time, see, <laughs> you'll end up making other marks. <laughs> but I'll show you for that so I you can blot very lightly also like that instead of wiping like that so I do a combination of blotting wiping I work with clean baby wipes and dirty baby wipes and a medium, one in the middle. <laughs> so I kind of have a bunch of little tools going on at the same time to get these, uh, to get kind of this look. So it is kind of like blending, but, um, I don't know how you would really want to categorize that. Okay, so here, in order to kind of get those uh, real heavy lines going away, I'm going to kind of wash them away. On my YouTube video I did yesterday, which is on there today, um, y'all can see how I did the drawer fronts using the same process. Okay. So, you see? Let me bring it in here. I really didn't want to have too many lines. I might throw one or two in there later on, but for the most part, I try not to bring those into this, this particular project anyway. But it's just another way of glazing. So glazing you can use for many, many different um, looks. But it is a it is a great tool. You just have to kind of get used to it. <laughs> it can be um, a little 
naughty. <laughs> A little bit naughty. I'm re actually recreating a look that I did on a very similar piece. It's a it was a French provincial. It had two doors in the middle. Yeah, it gives it that antique aged look. Um, everybody has their own definition of that, right? So I have I did my sides similar to this and. It's a custom order. My cu my client saw a um, piece done that I had done a while ago, so um, she wanted it pretty much the same. So <laughs> I actually hadn't um, glazed in so long. I kind of had to reteach myself. I was like, oh gosh, how did I do that? <laughs> if you don't use it, you lose it, you know? But we're back. We're back. So I'm like, oh man, I need to do some more glazing. Kind of getting my groove back here. I like it. It's just, it's fun. I said it's kind of like a different form of painting. It's an art in itself. It kind of, you know, you're doing your faux, your faux looks. You really, I'm barely, lightly doing this right here. And it, I mean, it just changes it. To get rid of those lines, I'm just blotting a little bit. But if you were to, let's say this piece was like really dirty and you came in and wanted to clean it, like do a quick wipe. If I were to actually come in here and do that, then you would see, you know, a line or, you know, that wiping line. So that's kind of cool um, to recreate something like that. I think it'll go with her home decor really well. And um, it just kind of sets that mood, especially like with good lighting and <laughs> all that. So yeah, this is um, more so where I want to get this top piece going. But we'll move down here. I don't, I don't want to go over the top part too soon though, because if it is still a little wet, I don't want to pull back all the glaze that I just did. If you guys are familiar with staining and you go wipe back a little bit later, um, you'll have to, um, or it will pull back your stain, you know? So it's best to kind of let that dry. And even when I go back on it, since I am using a moist, um, baby wipe um, I'm not going to go too crazy like hard on it so check that out so we just went from you know like a normal painted piece of furniture to like old I mean it looks pretty old the important part is to make sure you get it in those cracks, like so. <clears throat> not be too perfect. You don't want to be perfect. That is not, that's not the key. perfect. I do not paint perfect. Alright. So 
So just very lightly. I don't want to bring I don't want to bring it in too much because I want to keep the center lighter. You guys can check out um, Paint Couture's products on my website at www.texasgypsystyle.com. Just go to my homepage and all the way to the bottom you should see Paint Couture. And um, if y'all want to order it, it can be shipped to you. So, wow, what do y'all think? Are we ready to glaze something? Who's, who's gonna glaze now? Hmm? So even down here, I can just do some little, um, little taps with my brush and just come back in here with my baby wipe and barely and look it kind of makes that look um weathered or um gives them some shadow i always i always do under here um on the legs also and just give that a good wipe down. That does create some little marks in there. See if I can turn down there. You don't have to go as heavy on your um, on your glaze as I have. You do not have to. But it's an option, you know. In this case, my customer loved what I did before and I so I showed it to her without you know doing the glazing and I showed her the other one and said do you want me to do this look for you and um, she said oh yes I love it so <laughs> let's do it yeah all right so here I'm gonna finish out my framing and I do like to get a little bit more glaze on my brush for that because I want it to um, stand out and I'm not going to go back and blot this unless I absolutely need to because I do want to create a line I'm literally painting a dark line here this is gonna give me my what I love to see as a finished look it has like a beginning and an end you can even go in like I'm using my fingertip to get some of these spots that I'm having a little brush too much brush action here I like to get up under the tops here. A lot to create my shadow. it goes a long way especially if you're bringing more um, more moisture into it so it takes patience um, 
and just kind of going slow and working with it. For those of you that want to do this, um, um, but you're painting with chalk paint, I recommend sealing your piece first, waxing it, um, clear coating it. That way you have a barrier and your color doesn't tra transform too much. Um, so for instance, if you're painting um, something white and you want to go over it with this color, guess what? What's going to happen? Um, it's going to turn brown, like automatically. Um, I speak from experience. Um, so then you're like, you just don't get it. You know, you're like, ah, but I thought, and I've seen people do this, you know, or why would they mix these things? So, you know, there's been, you know, loopholes for that. So definitely wax it first. Um, and then you'll be able to work with it a lot more. Chalk paint absorbs this um, glaze like a sponge. So as soon as you put it on there, and it will be hard to get off, you may even have to repaint. Um, so it just depends on what paint you're using. This is General Finishes Milk Paint. It's got a smoother uh, finish to it. It's acrylic base. It's it's not like a mineral paint. Um, so you just have to know your your paint and how it goes with your other products like, um, like glaze. Glazes are pretty much, I would say across the board. Uh, they're water, water, uh, water based, but your paints are different and your, so that's your base. And you just want to make sure that you understand what's going to happen when you put that glaze on. And I think that's why a lot of people get nervous in doing it. Um, but if y'all have any questions about glazing and if you have a particular paint that you're using and you want to know how it's going to react going on to um, that, that paint. So just let me know. Um, y'all can send me a message or go on my YouTube, post a comment, um, whatever, however y'all want to do it. But I thank y'all so much for coming on and uh, hope y'all learned something. Hope y'all enjoyed an old world look tutorial with paint couture glaze um, in the Van Dyke Brown. That's my favorite. Um, and just remember baby wipes. And I use gloves just because uh, I, it's a little messy, but you don't necessarily have to. So thank y'all. Once again, my name is Krista Mulkey, owner of Texas Gypsy Style. Thank y'all for watching today. Bye-bye.